This is a case of African nose, and you see, I mean, photographs, and you will see now how we are going to uh, approach this case. Thank you. So we are going to use homograph in this case, uh, rib homograph and uh, fascia lato homograph. I was actually going to use an autograph, but because the lady is about 100 kilograms, he's overweight, and her blood pressure is about 160 over, over 90 now, so she's not suitable to obtain an autograph. So therefore, I'm going for the homograph now. So we have the fascia ready, the homograph fascia lata, and I already reshaped the cartilage, which is going to be fitted to the base and dorsum, as you see. So we get uh, some glue first, and we will just move the tissue glue on the fascia, about half of the fascia of tissue, tissue glue, and then we get the cartilage will be adjusted, as you see. And we'll brace it, give me non two small steps. We'll keep it on for about one minute. You see now, the cartilage is fixed on the on the fascia, as you see. It's fixed nicely to the fascia lata, the cartilage. So, Thus, we will have now a foundation for the cartilage to sit in. And now, we, in order to avoid warping and avoid displacement of the graft and floating, we will make the graft in a way we slice, we will make some scoring and slicing on the graft in a way that we're going to sit and dry the dorsum. So the first incision will be a longitudinal incision all the way, all the way through like this, as you see. And with a knife, so we make it interrupted, deep. Uh, we take some space and then deep. Then we take about few millimeters and then deep. We take few millimeters and then deep. So, so anyway, now we see it's going to open Nicely, but now because we fix the graft on the fascia, so the two, these two pieces will not overlap each other. And see now, it's going to open and not overlap each other. Again, again, give me the knife again, give me the knife again. You see now, it's opening, opening, but not overlapping each other. And now another scoring, hatch, cross hatching. Like this, like this, like this. So again the knife. Close hatching. Again, oh, my, uh, again, close hatching the opposite way now. the opposite way. So this is now the pieces we already slicing the cartilage, but it's already fixed down to the fascia. So the pieces will not overlap and the cartilage will be just open like a book on the dorsum and it will, it will You see how it will open now on the door, something like this. To open nicely on the door, I'll put it on the door, and I'll press it with my finger, as we'll see at the end of the procedure, uh, during the procedure. But this is the way. So you see how it's open now nicely, open longitudinal, and open this way. So now I'm going to rub it. So now it will reduce the warping. This will significantly reduce the warping. So when I'm going to put the, the graft on the door, I'm going to press it hard like this so it will open nicely on the door something like this the same when you do the hand push down so it will open like this and stay open and it will just override override the door some nicely so now i will just rub it now first and suture it hold so 
concentrate. So it is very extreme. I find it very nice. Daily, I had so many patients. I done this way, and the results are excellent. The shape of the of the dorsum graph is almost very natural because it's it's taking the normal curvature of the dorsum. And then to avoid warping also you can make another additional suture. Give marking then you see. Marking bin. I'm just marking it so I know this is the base of my my fascia should, should be going down. This is the lower face. This suture like this. This suture will also reduce the warping, warping of the graft. Come, come, don't come away from the face of the patient. Okay. So now we have the graft ready, ready to go. One, two, four, seven. The graft is nicely and, and ready to go on the patient dorsum, as you see. And we just, just remove any sharp edges from there. And then we will soak it with on antibiotic, on Cibro Bay antibiotic. Now soak it for a few minutes. And I will start doing the procedure. And I will show you now uh, how I, I, I put the graft at the, the, during the procedure. First step is to identify the tip defining point. What I mean by the tip defining point, I mean this is the highest point of the tip. It's compatible with the highest point of the tip, which is the junction with the gutter. This is the gutter cross, the cross, and this is the medial cross there, and this is the intermediate cross. So this the Highest point of the tip usually is compatible with the junction between the lateral cross and the intermediate cross. Therefore, our now aim of our procedure is that we do not do marginal incision, we do not expose the lateral cross, we do not steal or borrow any portion of the lateral cross. We divide the dome obliquely in, here, here in the midline at the junction between the intermediate and lateral cross. So we actually are working mainly in the midline on this area. We do not work mainly in the midline in this area. We do not work lateral. Don't steal, don't borrow any part of the lateral cross, no margin incision, no exposure. So now we mark the compatible area inside. You see, this is now the junction, very key, the junction now between the intermediate and the lateral cross. So the aim is to leave the lateral cross alone. Again, the section. the junction between intermediate and lateral cross. So these lateral cross allow no marginal incision, no exposure, no delivery, you don't go or steal any part. Now the first step is to obtain septal graft. So we go just a few meters behind the coda septum. I'm trying to find the right plane. I'm right already in the right plane. I'm gently trying to the sector will go Quickly backward, upward and downward because you are on the right plane. And then we already embedded the right left very contact slab. Now we're going to the right very contact slab. Again, we are on the right plane. We are on the right plane. The cartilage in the middle now, as you see, we are on the right brain on both sides. The cartilage in the middle. So we go about 1.5 centimeter below the dorsal set, and we need a good graph. So 
So we have a nice, a nice sip that I dropped, as you see. Very nice drop. Very nice sip that I got. We get this bit of this shot. It's back of this in back. Okay. Now, next step is to do the intercartridge incision. This is the midline, one centimeter away from the midline. So preserve the lateral, don't go lateral. Again, this is the midline, junction between the skin and this mucosa, only one centimeter away from the midline, don't go lateral. So sharp scissors, right, undermine the dorsum, undermine the dorsum, and then try to make an exact pocket. Give me Mark and Ben. This is now, what are the rules of having a nice draft, reduce floating and <coughs> displacement of the draft. The first, the first key maneuver is to have an exact pocket. So you need to push the graft tight inside your bucket. Don't make the, the bucket wide so your graft will float in. So tight pocket, tight pocket. This is the first rule of them. The first is, is a tight pocket now there. Exact pocket for the graft to go in. Now when we want to use the subraenal furnace, the, this furnace is caused by two factors, the curvature of the abalatal cartilage, curvature and the skull of the lateral cast. So we're removing parts, excising a small portion of this, preserve the mucosa, get the mucosa away, as you see, and remove this piece of cartilage. So it's coming from there, but you see, go back. You see, the abalatal cartilage is kept in full continuity with the dorsum septum. So this is the valve, it's absolutely intact, as you see. Again, on the other side, we will do the supraalar fullness. Moving the curvature of the abalatal cartilage with both small portions of the scores that are cast. Get the mucosa down and excise this small piece of cartilage which is the keeping the abatar cast in full continuity with the dorsum septum reserves the valve, as you see. So it's going from there. Now, tip lastly, we do the dome division. All the intermediate cura, looking at the junction, look as this is the intermediate lateral cross there, junction between lateral cross and intermediate cross, and divide the intermediate cross obliquely, obliquely, as you see, Reserve me fully the lateral cast. No marginal incision, no exposure. Again, dividing the intermediate cast obliquely, as you see, obliquely. Reserving the rim cartilage, keeping the rim cartilage in full continuity with the lateral cast. So, uh, preventing notching in this area. Now, deliver both intermediate cast to one side. So both intermediate across now and deliver to one side. You see how, how we work in very symmetrical, symmetrical and equal manner. Both intermediate crew are exactly the same size, the same length. If you are not prepared to work in equal and symmetrical manner, you will never try rhinoblasty. So now we make a bucket between the two middle crew all the way down, it's above the nasal spine. And then we go to our graft. We need a nice tip graft, good tip graft. So that's a nice tip graft. Long tip graft always because we need to augment the nasal angle. Remember always in this patient, African patient, you have six skin and you have a soft cartilage. No sharp edges, avoid sharp edges. So now the columnar strut will go in place. So we are creating a strong foundation in the midline of conjoined intermediate to middle cura, supported by columnar strut and next step a tip graft. So this strong foundation will stretch the columella. It will 
contribute for the tip projection and tip elevation, rotation and symmetry, and definition. So it's very, very important step of the procedure to have this strong foundation in the midline of four main structures, the two conjoint intermediate to medial cura, supported by the columnar strut and the tip graft. Another suture just to prevent dog ear in this area. If you don't do the suture down, sometimes you find a dog, dog ear in this area. Now, we another bucket along the caudal margin of the tumor cura on the way down and get your typograph. Nice typograph, strong typograph. You need more tip projection in this patient with six skin and soft cartridge. You need good tip support. You see the patient has got very tiny, tiny soft cartilage. This is the same situation in the African and Asian noses what applied. So the African noses applied exactly to the Asian noses. So we have now a strong foundation in the midline of these four cartilages, the intermediate cura, medial cura, and the columnar strut, and the table graft. We have the letter cross on the alar side was intact. We did not bore, we did not steal any part of the letter cross, no marginal incision, no exposure. In these cases, in particular, in the African and Chinese, I would consider a double, double tip graph because I want more tip definition. So I still have nice piece there. I would just put it there and suture it. So I want more tip definition and more tip revival. You see the cartilage are quite soft. So I need to strengthen the cartilage and get more tip definition. So double, double table graft, one long and one short. That will give you the best possible tip definition and refinement. I mean, always aim for perfection. There is no perfect rhinoplasty, simply because there is no perfect healing in the process. So no respect for surgeon would guarantee the healing in the process. So therefore, no perfect healing process, no perfect rhinoblasty result, but aim for perfection. You will get close. Sharp scissor. We we'll remove these sharp edges from there. Now we get this structure to the midline back to its position in the midline, as you see now, very nice. We already achieved some stretch of the columella, as you see, some degree of more tip definition and refinement. If you compare this view with this, if you see how the columella was quite short there, and the tip was obtuse as defined, now we have, we have some more definition, and the nostrils have become more, more uh, less round, as you see. Now we need, we need, uh, let us look at the other cross. Let us look at the other cross. You see, the other cross are kept, as you see, intact. This is the beauty of this technique. You have the other cross in the blade, no marginal incision, no exposure, and we just trim this sharp edge from there, you see. And this because this shaft of the other cross to support the alar side wall in both sides. Again, this is very nice, very nice attack cross is kept there. No marginal incision, no exposure, large piece of attack cross kept to support the inner side wall. So you have a strong foundation in the midline to support the tip, and you have a strong attack cross in both sides to support the inner side wall. Therefore, you are minimizing the boost of problem 
as much as you can. Now, before we do some more degree of tip definition and refinement, we now is the time to insert our, our, our graft. So we said the first rule to reduce the possibility of floating displacement deviation and warming is to make an exact intact, uh, exact and tight bokeh. Now the second rule is to elevate the boreostium from the bone, because elevation of the boreostium will give more possibility for the graft to fix, to heat directly to the bone and fix. So remove the boreostium from the bone. As you see, we already removed the boreostium from the bone, and then we have now our graft, which we it's already soaked in in uh, the Cibro Bay antibiotics. And you have seen this is we marked the base. The base was so it's going to sit like this, and the graft will open nicely like this, and it will open like this. We already scored and slice the graft, and now this graft will go to the this position. You see, exact pocket, exactly exact pocket. And then we just, with this one, make sure that the fascia is spread over, is not kinked anywhere, up and down. So what a nice result. Look, look how much, how much uh, projection, projection we achieved on the dorsum, extremely nice dorsum. You see before, before it was, give me the ruler, it was 1.7 1, 1 or 1.6 was the height of the dorsum before. And now looks, it's, it's 2. Point, 2.3, 2.4. So we elevated the dorsum by almost half centimeter, the height, more projection. And you see how nice now is the very nice, very nice shape. Very nice looking dorsum. And, and if you look, come from there, over my shoulder, look now how tight it is, how tight. I cannot move it, I push it, I cannot move it, right or left. Because I made very tight, very tight, uh, bucket. I remove the boreostium. Also, I rub the graft with the fascia. Rubbing the graft with the fascia will make it tight and fix in place. And it will heal nicely in the midline, even if the fascia is absorbed after about few months, six months, nine months. But by this time, the, the graft already been healed in the midline. So now, you see, we fix the, the, the graft nicely and we press it now like the same when you do with, with the uh, hand push down, you press the graft like this. So this will make the graft to open nicely because we scored and we slice the graft. So this will make the graft to ride, to ride the dorsum, to ride nicely the dorsum. The, the cartilage will not be displaced because it's already glued, glued to the fascia. And you see now how the graft, the edge there is riding, it's going down, it's, the, it's, it's getting normal curvature. It's, the graft is curved now, the graft is curved like this. So it's, it's actually riding the dorsum. Riding the dorsum, it's not sitting like, it's not set like on, on, on a, a, a horizontal. It's riding down. I mean, if you imagine this is now the, of course, the dorsum, like this. So the graft is not sitting like this. The graft is, it's a dorsum. So the graft is sitting like this now. Because we scored the graft all the way through. Which is the beauty of this technique, that the graft is, is riding, riding on the dorsum. It's not sitting like this. So if you sit like this, it will walk, go down or go down there, it will walk or become deviated. Now with this technique, what we scored, the graft is sitting like this, it's, 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 it's riding the dorsum. And you see now, look at the nice shape from above. You see, it's got curvature, it's curved. It's curved, it's not vertical, it's, still, it's, it's curved now. Look from the side, side is quite nice and curved. I press it, so it looks very nice. Now I'm going to do, in order to get more tip definition, I'm going to do the uh, letter cross approximating suture, the spanning suture. So the graft is very tight. 
You can look at the graph, see the graph from there. See the graph is there. So now with the smiling suture, we also is going to squeeze the graph in there and, and make it tight and fix it in the midline. So let us cross approximating suture, we start in the anterior septal angle from there. Let me not, not too close. The graph, push the graph in the midline. Anterior septal angle. Going through the anterior septal angle from this side to this side. And then the other cross, cephalic cataract cross, small bite, a small bite in the cephalic cataract cross, as you see, small bite on the cephalic cataract cross. So therefore, we are now reducing the subalar fullness here, as you see, without trimming the lateral cross, with full preservation of the lateral cross. Back to the other side, through the superior septal angle. Again, back to the key fire cathode cross on this side. I just push the graph up slightly. The zeta cross to the key fire cathode cross and small bite. Small bite in the key fire cathode cross. And this again will reduce, you see, the subtle air of fullness for you on this side without trimming any portion of the lateral cross. Now back to the superior septal angle. Already push the graft up slightly. The graft sitting nicely there on the nasal. And then I'm back, I do it twice this way in order to get equal tension in both sides. You can do your knot as I said before, but I will do my knot now. After I do, I go again through the septal and get twice in order to get equal tension in both sides. And now this is the cast approximating suture. Give me very nice tip definition, very nice tip narrowing and refinement without clean, without, without, any excision or the trimming of the kefir cataract cross, only approximating, squeezing in. And this is BDS, absorbable suture. And so, okay, see now how much the definition and narrowing and refinement we achieved how much deep definition and narrowing. Look at the narrowing, nice narrowing now. Look from above. And look at the side view. Look at the side view. And compare, <coughs> compare with this typical African. We transform this form, this nose, from a typical African nose into almost, into almost a normal, normal looking nose, as you see, normal looking nose, very nice. Those are the graph, nice tip projection, elevation, the finishing, very nice tip line refinement, the nose almost normal nose nostrils, and quite a straight, straight dorsum. Now we will just reduce the size of the uh, nostrils slightly, not very much, but if you do too much, you get angle there, you see? We don't want to get this angle, so just a little bit. Wait, okay. Always we stay inside the fold, so don't go lateral to the fold, don't go low or above the fold. Stay inside the fold. Again, stay inside the fold. And then squeeze your finger, squeeze like this, and get to this angle there, mark this angle, connect from lateral to medial. 
And then this is mark your first suture, your first suture. Again, squeeze there. And this angle there. And connect from ethanol to median. And mark now your first suture. So it's very nice technique. The main thing is the way how we, we scored and sliced the graft. Look, we are preserving the stiller skin as much as we can. The stiller skin with them. You see, nice, very nice now. No angles there. Again, there on this side. So we go back to the dorsal summer graft, being nice here with scored, sliced, and put in place in a way to ride the dorsum and get the normal curvature of the dorsum. This will be there. <coughs> the vestibular skin, it's okay as much as you can. Okay. Almost, you can never get equal, but as I say again, Aim for perfection, you never get perfection, but you get close. So now start with full thickness skin. You see now edge to edge coming nicely. So we mark our face suture. And then I will go subcuticular in the middle. When you go subcuticular in the middle, you can hardly see the scar after after six weeks or eight weeks. Take this one out. Take both of them. Take both of them. So the cuticular again. Again, so the cuticular. And last one, small bite, very small bite, last one. So almost done. Now, now the side again start with the full sickness, the skin. And you see now edge to edge. You see now it's becoming edge to edge. And then go in subacuticular. Subcuticular, as you see, subcuticular. Last one. Small bite. Almost done. 
So, a very nice preservation rhinoplasty, fully preservation rhinoplasty, working mainly on the midline, as you see. No lateral cross marginal incision, no exposure, no delivery. We did not borrow, we did not steal any part of that lateral cross. Now, if you look inside, give me, give me a second. Just a second. look inside now. Look how nice everything is coming together, edge to edge. You see, edge to edge, edge to edge. This nose will heal in two days' time. Mucosa to mu heals to mucosa in, in 24 hours. You see, at the other side there also. Edge to edge, edge to edge, mucosa to mucosa, skin to skin, no gaps, no holes, and the graft is squeezed in the midline. You see how nice is this technique? No margin incision, no exposure, oblique dome division, created a strong foundation in the midline of conjoint intermediate to medial cura, supported by columnar strut and tip graft. We left the thercrust intact on the on the alar side wall. No, we did not, no margin incision, no exposure. No delivery, we did not borrow, we did not steal any part. We did the cross that are cross approximating suture in order to in order to uh, reduce uh, in, uh, improve the uh, definition and refinement of the tip. We used, you've seen the homograph, the graph with the fascia that and achieved very nice, very nice dorsum, dorsum projection, as you see. Extremely nice nose. Look at this very nice natural looking nose. And from all the stuff from the profile and from the basic view. From the base of view is very extremely nice, and the the uh, tip tip narrow and refinement, and the straight dorsum. And compare compare with the typical typical African typical African nose before the short columnar, the very wide uh, alar base, the uh, round uh, horizontal nostrils and look at the tip, look at the uh, short columella, rectal columella, the very low dorsum, the, the very obvious clear settling of the nose. And now you see how much, how much with uh, dorsal projection we achieve, nice tip projection, nice tip elevation, very natural nose. And this reservation, reservation conservative less invasive rhinoblasty and the time now since we started you see another time is 31 minutes so we are still below 32 minutes this is really the magic magic show nice this time this is a magic our magic rhinoblasty uh, i would call it the the future rhinoblasty and this is most many of of of, fa of facial plastic surgeon now they are, I mean, watching our videos and trying to, to, to learn from this technique, which is the preservation technique. And I'll show you how I do my dressing. So before I do the dressing, I will inject the, around the graft with Cibro Bay, Cibro Bay antibiotic, just inject around the graft again. Inject around the graft. Okay. And now we spray the nose with upside to get more sticky. We remove this one. Get the sponge and put the first one and then the second one. I just put now then just one needle to make sure the graft will not be the one needle, the insulin needle or the needle. And to make sure the graft. Yeah, okay, that's it. 
Nadav is not displaced. We stay for one week. So it's a big actually transformation transformation of the patient nose shape as you have seen with the our I mean before and after result now today. I hope you find it interesting. You have seen so many tricks with the dorsum, how will you shape the dorsum garb, the tip velocity, the air like with the section. So I hope you found these tips are very useful and it will improve the skills we all learn from each other. I'm still learning until now, day by day I learn more. It's, it's important with this video that we share our knowledge and each one will learn from other valued colleague. You see now how we have done full rhinoplasty in about 31, 32 minutes. If you look at our videos, we have over 300 videos available for our surgery minute by minute and second by second in our website, Rhinoplasty Business Academy. And you see how we do full rhinoplasty in generally speaking between 20 minutes to 40 minutes. Full rhinoplasty, even the most difficult one, the septal rhinoplasty. This, our approach is very nice. Preservation. Preserve the structure, preserve the anatomy. It's an incisional technique, more than excisional technique. It's incisional, incisional technique that would preserve the structure, reshape, rearrange the cartilage without much, much excision and removal and trimming. This is Basha Bizra. Thank you for watching.